You might think a hammer is just a hammer, but when it comes to design, the Steel Eagle nails it. It's made by one of the oldest hammer companies in the world, Vaughn and Bushnell. With 140 years of expertise behind it, the Steel Eagle is a hit, with handymen and professional builders alike. We design our hammers for the end user. Being in business as long as we have has uh, proven that we're doing it right. It can be as pretty as you want and look good, but if it doesn't function right, you know, it's useless. It has to feel good, and the balance is real key. It's all in the swing. That may sound simple, but it's anything but. Vaughn and Bushnell uses sophisticated software to make sure the hammer is doing most of the work, not the person swinging it. If you're using it all day, you don't want the vibration going back from what you're driving, go back into your elbow, causing carpal tunnel, you know, problems like that. So they developed a patented shock block in the hammer head to reduce vibration to the user's arm. It's a wooden block with a rubber plug that goes around the outside, and as it, the vibration comes up through the head, it's absorbed in the wood block and into the rubber core. The Steel Eagle is one of 250 different styles of hammers made in the factory in Illinois. The company hasn't strayed far from its roots. It started in Chicago back in 1869 when an 18-year-old blacksmith named Alexander Vaughn set up shop behind a hardware store owned by Sidney Bushnell. 140 years ago, Alexander Vaughn was making post hole diggers and they liked his product so well, they wanted, you know, smaller hand tools. Vaughn and Bushnell teamed up and started producing hammers for local craftsmen and builders. The other earlier hammers uh, looked about like they do now, you know, a curved claw, which is very functional, so that's why the design has hung around so long. It's maybe streamlined a little bit, make it a little more better looking. Today, the company manufactures a whopping 10,000 hammers a day. That's a lot of hammers. It starts with long steel bars, which are cut down to a workable length of five feet. Then the bars go to the forge shop. The operator will load the, the furnace, the slot furnace, with uh, 20 bars. The bars are heated in the forge shop, 2200 degrees. He will take the first bar out after the, the proper heat's been reached on the bar, and he will forge that. The forging is done in a massive press called a drop hammer. It's fitted with dies or molds that are in the shape of the handle and the head. The top die is in a ram that is lifted and dropped. That's why it's termed drop hammer. Five to six blows, sometimes seven blows, to uh, fill the cavity with the steel to make the part. It strikes the white hot steel bars with a force of 1,500 pounds. With each blow, the shape of the steel gets more and more refined. After forging, the hammer heads and handles go to the grind department. The grind department does machining and grinding to uh, perfect the shape of the tool. Starting with the face, or striking surface, they grind each and every plane of the hammer head, giving the steel eagle the beautiful finish it's known for. Then they go to heat treating, where first they're placed in a furnace for 20 minutes. That's your key to a good quality hammer, is the, the heat treating. The heat treating is done to strengthen the face and the claws on a nail hammer to uh, withstand the blows and the nail pulling that the hammer is going to be doing. After the furnace, the hammers go into a molten bath containing a secret combination of ingredients. I'm not going to tell you what's in the molten bath. That's proprietary. It's a process that we like to hold close to our best. Different parts of the hammer receive different levels of heat treating. We don't want the hardness to be the same in the face as we do on the handle and the claws because your face is going to be striking nails and doing pounding and your claws are going to be doing pulling and prying and your handle is going to be doing some flexing and bending. So you need uh, different hardness requirements for those three areas. The company logo is burned onto each hammer with a laser. Then they receive a spray of powdered lacquer and are sent through an oven. When they emerge, the powder has baked to a clear finish which prevents rusting. Now the all-important shock blocks are inserted into the hammers to reduce vibration. Then rubber grips are injection molded into the handles and the excess rubber is trimmed by hand. 
Finally, the hammers arrive in the shipping department, where the handles are wrapped in plastic and the barcode and logo stickers put on. 140 years ago, Alexander Vaughn could never have imagined that his company would become the world's largest manufacturer of striking tools. Quality. I think the quality of our tools is what's made us the name we are today. It's an ultimate tool. You know, every man needs a hammer, every woman needs a hammer. It's something that's always going to be around regardless of what you do.